Hello and welcome to Cinder Shadow Gaming. I am your host, Cinder Shadow, and today this is This Week in Magic. So lots has happened in the last week or so. We've had Core 2021 get completely spoiled and then move into the Jumpstart spoilers. And they are surprisingly, um, there's a lot of surprises in those Jumpstart spoilers as well. Um, I know with Core 2021, we've had, I think there's been a little influx of the way the market's reacting. It sounds like some people uh, may have bought into the Ugin that was reprinted in there and now they're losing money but whenever they make these reprints the the reprints really don't don't go too crazy with the market yeah there's a uh, there's a downtick look at the shocklands from Ravnica soon give them another year they're going to be right back up to where they were it's like the fetch lands when those were printed in uh, modern masters 2017 They've come back even stronger because the supply of them became a little bigger for a very short time because then a lot more people snatch them up and people don't get rid of their shock lands. They hang or, or don't get rid of their fetch lands. They hang on to them and they are a much needed reprint in the future. And it's really unfortunate we haven't seen those in Jumpstart. I do suspect we will see it in one of the commander products coming very soon. Now... When it comes to reprints, there's been a lot of discussion with them. When's appropriate? How often can you say and can you put them in there? Mark Rosewater has even come out and saying that the uh, the reprint market is it, it's dependent on how much the product price is going to be on how much they can put in there for the reprints, which I don't really agree with that because a card is a card is a card. They all are printed at the same value from the manufacturer no matter what that card is it's the exact same detail so i don't think that they and the wizards of the coast themselves should be taking an account of the secondary market when they do these reprints they should just be doing the reprints that people need such as fetch lands and putting them out on the market there's other things that have been caused actually it's a big controversy once again because the there's certain cards such as Ristic Strud Studies, um, the Hunter's Insight, and I believe there's one other one being printed in Jumpstart and in, in Zendikar Rising. We have some new and uh, we have another reprint coming very soon, which I do suspect is just the Hunter's Insight once again because of the Jumpstart spoilers. The way that they're overlapping these sets seem to be reprinting in the ways that these can completely go but these cards are being reprinted by an artist by the name of Therese Nielsen. Therese Nielsen did the original Force of Will back in Alliances and her art is absolutely stunning. She has a style beyond any other comparison. Probably the closest one comparing to it nowadays is Rebecca Gway or Seb McKinnon. All three of those artists are absolutely amazing. However, Therese Nielsen has... Um, She's getting a lot of flack and a lot of this cancel culture, which I really don't approve of. It's it's really not something that I want to see happen to a well-known, very, very well-known artist in the Magic community that has been in the Magic community since 95, 96. Very old. Like, we're, we're going all the way back to alliances. It, it's not something that should just disappear um we've already had them raise up and talk about um the the certain cards like the invoke prejudice getting completely ousted and banned and to the point where they um they censored the art in itself on the gatherer and there was a lot more behind revoke prejudice than just the card and the description that that card really brings to the magic game it, it's not it was uh, the way I see Revoke Prejudice was a time, a different time, because that was in 1994 when that card came out, and it really created a, a, it didn't, it was never done as a dividing factor back then, where now in the year 2020, it has become a thorn in Magic the Gathering's side, and they're like, oh, instead of just 
just reprinting something and putting it over because they have a they they have the revert reserves list, so it's not like they can turn around and do that. But instead, they they say, oh, we're just going to erase it from history, from all history, all databases. Yeah, the card still exists, but it doesn't exist in our eyes, and that's not something that I'm I'm very happy to see. It, these cards were never printed with that intention of them being inherently racist. And I think that's part of the problem here. We're seeing this turmoil happen throughout the world. And that turmoil is creating a divide in people. And and now it's becoming, uh, if you're with them, you're with them. If you're against them, you're against them. And that narrative is is what takes down societies. And unfortunately, I want, I would rather us all build up and be the people we are, except we do have a few bad apples on either side of the coin and because of that it's creating they're they're getting the most attention when the majority of people aren't on either side of that coin they're against both ends of that coin and coming back to the middle now we have Therese Nielsen we have people um, saying that she has been this evil evil influence on the Magic the Gathering world all because she may follow certain people on Twitter. Have Therese Nielsen's art in them? Uh, what uh, will we see any more of her art in the future? Um, great question. We we hear you. Um, we haven't commissioned new art from Therese Nielsen in quite a while. The last product that will have any reprint art from her is this fall with uh, Zendikar Rising. Now. We're talking light conspiracies. We're talking conspiracies to this. We're talking like Alex Jones level stuff. But I don't see liking Alex Jones as you're you're into a conspiracy uh, theorist. You, if you maybe follow that stuff, a lot of that is entertainment. When you talk about conspiracies, it is entertainment in that sense. And if you're not allowed to be entertained... You're not entertained! then where where does it lead us it doesn't lead us down to and down a path that creates a proper discourse it, it creates a divide in the communities it creates a, a place where people don't want to hear the other side and if you don't want to hear that other side then why are you following it and watching it and being entertained by it if you don't want to see that side of entertainment then i think you need to unplug and you need to walk away from it yourself like that that's the self part of all of this you going out onto social media and twitter and all this other stuff and to say that oh they follow this person you can't follow them um because they're they blah 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 without whatever I honestly don't care. You want to show me screenshots of Therese Nielsen following um, Infowars? So be it. Who cares? I don't care. Um, they they can be entertaining. Doesn't mean that you sit there and follow and actually believe everything these people say. And I think that's part of the part of the thing here. Therese Nielsen uh, last year did put out a letter stating that yes. She she's always been seen as the black sheep in her family and everything like that. And that's because her worldview was different from everyone else. I know myself, I'm not a very religious person at all. I, I don't follow any of it. I, I just sit there and go, I have my own thoughts of spirology. All right. And that's the way I kind of look at this from the outside looking in. Um, everyone can have an opinion, but that opinion doesn't mean that we need to persuade it one way or another. We just need to accept that, yes, they have that opinion. And because they have that opinion, doesn't mean it's time to get them cancelled. It, it's not... It's really a, a place where people are, are now walking on eggshells, and it's not where people want to be. People want to be able to have this discussion. Maybe over time, their, their views on this will change and i gotta say over the last few years my views on the world have completely been rocked uh watching one one side of the coin completely bully another side and it's just unbelievable on what i'm seeing um i 
myself, if you ever wanted to sit there and see where my political is leaning, it's always been more liberal. Um, I, I grew up in a liberal, in a liberal environment. Um, and I still to this day do not consider myself a conservative. Um, as I don't personally don't trust them as far as I can throw them. And that has been always my thing with it. But at the same time, I can see value in listening to both sides of that coin. When it comes down to it, why why should I turn around and say and fight fight for against it? it it's not something that we fight against, and that's part of being in in the first world, the free world, and everything like that. And it's it's why this is very disheartening to me to see one of Magic the Gathering's greatest artists get completely pushed to the wayside and cancelled. I, I I really don't like this idea of it. With with the Therese Nielsen stuff, uh, there's been an article put up by Hipsters of the Coast. And I cannot physically read that on on the stream because I I tried I recorded it and this is another take on it. Um, I got very heated trying to I'm trying to read that, and I don't think it gets my point across correctly. I don't think people should be cancelled over following someone on Twitter. Um, they're going off saying that Therese Nielsen is also a TERF, which is a trans-exclusionary feminist or something like that. I don't even think Therese Nielsen is a feminist in that case, because just because she has a... Uh, a lesbian partner in all honesty like that that to me is a leap at logic um i think this comes down to like the jk rolling with talking about biological sex and all this other stuff and then there this goes back to the one pro player that wrote um on therese nielsen guru lands a uh, political statement against therese nielsen for and then using using them in a tournament play on camera. That's not the type of person that we should be watching build up the community. That that that's not a role model. That's someone sitting there on a stage with a grudge against someone else and in all honesty it's selfish and childish. Um to sit there up on the stage as a champion, as a professional player, that is not very professional. It's fine that they did that. That was their point. They got that point across. They want to do things like that. That's fine. Let's see how far it really gets you for for persuading the uh, the community that you're a good person. Because in all honesty, that's not the type of thing I see as as good in a person. That that's something that it, it it's something that if you were to grow up a little bit, it wouldn't be that bad. Like. There's other ways to make these statements, and I don't think that was the proper place to make the statement. Like me making this video right now. I, I know people are going to look at it and go, well, you're making a statement here. And I'm like, well, that's the purpose of my video right now, is to say, listen, it's she shouldn't be cancelled. Wizards of the Coast should be commissioning new art from her. We have the clip that came out there saying that they haven't commissioned anything from her in a while. Um, there's nothing, and it sounds like they're not going to do any reprints of her artwork in the future because they're listening to the community. And if they were truly listening to the community, they would see that majority of the community would be saying, no, 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 you need to reprint her art. You need to do more of her art because that's what we like. There is a small per percentage of the community that is saying that they don't want to see her in, in, in artwork. And in all honesty, I've seen more positive things about Therese Nielsen than I have seen negative and I think that's where we as a group of people need to let wizards know Therese Nielsen shouldn't go anywhere she should stick around in the community and if she has a different worldview then let her have her worldview in her own privacy it's not something that's going to affect you in the long run it's something completely different we're not coming out saying she's like the like a person from World War II that we're fighting against as Axis and allies. It, it doesn't make any sense in this case. I think she's a very loving person uh, with the best intentions for herself and her family and the world. And to draw this paintbrush saying that that paintbrush uh, being dipped in the black ink 
is completely unfounded. I hope you guys did like this video. I know it's a little bit more towards the political statement and leaning and stuff like that. And I'm trying to stay away from that because I want to make wholesome videos and Magic the Gathering videos. I just don't see this as a a very good place for the game at all. Um, banning cards over things that people had no idea on, um, like Invoke Prejudice and everything like that, um, I do get the idea of banning that card. I really do because it did draw a very fine line. Um, the other cards I didn't get. Um, it was to the point where I even saw someone mentioning that the Jihad card was Islamic phobic. And I'm like, was that even a term back in 94? Are, are, you, are you kidding here? Like, back in 94 when that card was, was presented out in the world of Magic the Gathering, people went, oh hey, this is kind of cool. It reflects the way life was. It reflected things that happened in history. And we took that, we took a fantasy spin on something that happened in history, and we made it into a game to not forget the, the history of things. We made it into a game because it was fun, and it's entertainment, and that is what all of this comes down to. If you're not getting entertainment out of the game that you're playing, then why are you playing it? If there's so much injustice in the world, why aren't you fixing your own world first and then moving on beyond that? Like, there is a lot of problems we see in the world nowadays. People with disagreements, but that is the world and that's how we live. People are allowed to disagree. And if you come and have a sensible talk and you do it in a sensible way, then those disagreements can be solved and solutions can be found. Instead, there's people running around in the streets and completely destroying stuff that people have built up. And that destruction does not create a culture that is inclusive to everyone. That creates something that will knock everyone down and will divide everyone. And it really needs to end. Thank you for watching this video, and so everyone is aware, I do have a Patreon set up uh, with a tier as low as a dollar. So if you want to support me in any way, that is one of the best ways to do it. Especially in the uncertain times that we have right now. On top of that, I also have a Teespring set up with the logoed merchandise of the hoodie on a mug or on a t-shirt. If you guys want to support there too, the links will be in the description below.